The last video before a short break, and yes, I will not post any videos next week. The last video is about the topic that I wanted to cover since like a year at the very least. This topic is very important in our understanding what sources of information are good and what are bad, what opinions shall we trust and what not, and do facts actually care about feelings or do they not. Anecdotal evidence – that's the topic of today's video. Is this evidence any good or is it completely bad? Can we use it at some occasions or is it just all wrong information? More about it in a moment. But obviously, before we begin, I have to tell you that this is your experience and here I share my various experiences about different topics. I do two videos a week, Mondays and Thursdays. If you will enjoy this video, please drop a like and also subscribe to the channel. Let's go! Obviously, we start with the definition and this is an official definition. In my own words, anecdotal evidence is an evidence that is based on experience of one person or maybe some mouth-to-mouth -mouth experience, but overall, it's not that a lot of people think like that, some people think like that. This evidence is not considered a good quality evidence and is normally positioned on the opposite side of the spectrum of evidence to statistical evidence. So we have anecdotal evidence on one part, on the, on the one side, and on the opposite side we have statistical evidence that is based on science. Where is the main difference between these two kinds of evidence? The statistical evidence can be repeatedly proven through different scientific means and it kind of don't depend on the person and it basically doesn't matter what person thinks about this evidence, this evidence still holds some value. And on the other hand, Anecdotal evidence is something that is maybe true for one person, but doesn't have necessarily to be true for other people. That doesn't mean that all anecdotal evidence is false. It is not wrong per definition. Actually, anecdotal evidence can and is true on a lot of different occasions. It's just not a kind of evidence on base of which you shall come to the conclusions, base of which you shall make big decisions, based on which you shall live your life. It's just one opinion, one experience of sometimes not you, but other people. Which is why it can be true, but it also can be false. And that is why, obviously, a lot of people are looking on the statistical uh, evidence, because statistical evidence is, has higher probability of being true for you too. Anecdotal evidence kinda has, but the probability is anyway lower than statistical evidence. That's basically a fallacy, one of the fallacies that is connected to anecdotal evidence. Some people see something that occurred once or hear some opinion from a person once and they think, okay, it happened once, so it shall work for everybody. Which obviously not always true, but sometimes we believe some assumptions, some evidences to be true for everybody because we respect a person, because we have some personal connection with a topic or personal connection with a person, which is why some of the assumptions are just assumptions. They are not real conclusions, they are not real facts, they are assumptions of some specific people. And it is important to know what is an assumption and what is a fact. Still, although you cannot use anecdotal evidence for proper statistics, for proper, proper science, for proper big conclusions or for proper facts, it doesn't mean that this, evidence type, this type of evidence is not useful at all. It does has its use. You can create a hypothesis based on the anecdotal evidence. That happens a lot in medical field. A lot of situations happen in the medical field, for example, when a person is cured because of some magic. So basically science doesn't have an answer, but curing process happened. That's typical example of anecdotal evidence. One situation happened to one person and nobody knows why. And that can create a hypothesis for science which can lead to some proper science, to some publications, to some experiments and maybe Based on this piece of anecdotal evidence, we can create way more statistical evidence, way more science, way more facts. But only because this anecdotal evidence was true for this specific person, we cannot make a conclusion, we cannot make a fact 
that something is true. Let me give you a couple of examples. Example number one, a person is lying in a hospital, a person is feeling really bad, or the person is almost dying, then that person gets some magical something, magical tablet, so like it's a magical pill, that's a word, and the next day that person is as healthy as ever and everything is great. Would it be smart to assume that this magical pill will help everybody with the same situation, with the same problem? Where would it be smart to assume that maybe something else in the surrounding of the person helped that person during the healing process? Maybe the water that that person drank, maybe the person, the people that were around that person during the time. So anecdotal evidence that we have in this situation, the person took the pill, the pill and the person was healed. And it wouldn't be smart to assume that pill will help everybody at least prior to statistical evidence. So basically, we make statistical, we make science trial, experimental trials, and afterwards we create some data, we create some statistical evidence, and based on that we know, pill helped, or pill didn't help, or maybe water helped, or maybe something else helped. But prior to making this whole way up, it wouldn't be a very smart thing to assume. Like, you can try, you can always try giving a pill to a patient, but at least you shall be honest with the patient and say it is an experimental treatment. It isn't true. It wasn't proven, proven with a high percentage to work for you. Another example. You can still find it in advertisement, but based on my experience, it, the amount of it goes down, but it is still present. The point is you have this image before and after. Before that person was sad and miserable and whatnot, after drinking some magical drink, that person was great, had two six-packs and was the best in the world. Even if we assume that the drink was the thing that helped, so the person drank the drink, the person got better. It doesn't mean that that drink will work for you. It can work for you. It can work less for you, it can doesn't work for you, it can harm you. And prior to making a good decision of drinking or not drinking, look at statistical data, look at statistical evidence. Anecdotal evidence you have right before your eyes, before and after. Look at statistical evidence, look whether there is some science behind it, look whether it actually works. But to be honest with you, a lot of humans, same thanks to our psychology, we actually are quite mm, gullible, I think is the word, for this kind of advertisement. We see and we think it will work for us. We see images, we uh, connect with emotions that person has prior to the moment and we connect with emotions that we want to have with a person after the moment and we think we want to get it too, that person got it, there is no reason why I couldn't get it and you try to go for it. Although there is no evidence that that will actually help you. No, none, nada. But still somehow the psychological thing is in our head. That person did it, even if that person was an exception, I am for sure am an exception true too. <laughs> Me, I am an exception. And in the same way thinks every person in society. Last example. A person died in a, a car accident, very sad, but the person was 105 and the person drank alcohol almost every day and smoked cigarettes every day. It is obviously a sad situation, but you can see that there is some other evidence in, the, in that situation. The person was 105 and drank alcohol and smoked cigarettes. So you can think, yeah, okay, alcohol and cigarettes is not bad for human body. That person was 105 and was feeling well enough to drive a car. I mean, that person died during the car accident, but still, prior to that moment, everything was fine, everything was okay. Obviously, I hope you know that there is enough statistical evidence to prove that the both alcohol and cigarettes are bad for your body. It depends on the amounts, but still. But the point is, we have this anecdotal evidence of person being able to live throughout their own whole life with this bad influence, the influence that we consider bad, and that person still managed to do it. And we think again, I'm probably the same exception. I will, that person did it, I will do it too. 
And there, that's the point where I would suggest you to ask yourself, are you sure that your body is as exceptional as you say? And from here I will go to this statement that I heard some time ago, not from the best source, but the statement itself is a good statement that can be used cautiously, I would call it like that. And it is the statement that facts don't care about your feelings, that facts are true and based on facts we shall make decisions and feelings are good stuff, but keep it to yourself. And it is both true and false in my personal opinion. Shall we make decisions for the whole society based on the opinion of one, two, three people, based on the experience of one, two, three people? I personally think no. I personally think that we shall first consider statistical evidence and afterwards consider anecdotal evidence. Which means that we first try to solve the problems that influence the majority of people and then go like to the minorities. And I know it is not the best way of thinking. Basically, we shall work for the good of the whole society and that's what a lot of societies can do right now. But if you look on different societies which are not as good in terms of financial and political situation, they don't care about minorities. They care about majorities only and even majorities don't have a good life. Which doesn't mean that your personal experience, that your personal feelings, that your personal anecdotal evidence isn't valuable. That it doesn't have any value, any worth at all. At least for you it does. At the end of the day it doesn't matter what statistical evidence says, if you don't belong to the statistical evidence, if the statistical evidence doesn't work for you, but you have some anecdotal evidence that works for you, then probably, yeah, the statistical evidence isn't for you and your anecdotal evidence is better for you and you shall use it in order to make good decisions for yourself, for your life, for your health, for your relationships, whatnot. Obviously, I would always advise you to at least find out what statistical evidence says about some specific situation, being it your health, being it maybe services that you are using. Nowadays we have like different Google Maps uh, stuff, we have other apps that provide you statistical evidence about some locations, I would call it like that. Or maybe about relationships, or maybe like something else, maybe about your appearance. There is enough statistical good data. Will it work for you? I don't know. Nobody knows. You probably is the first person to know it. And with high probability, a lot of statistical evidence information will and can work, can or will work for you. But with, with some probability, sometimes anecdotal evidence will be better for you. Sometimes your personal experience that you have with your life or maybe experience with some people around you whom you trust will be better than the best statistical evidence that we have out there. I still don't think that we shall use anecdotal evidence uh, for big decisions, for societal de decisions, or maybe even for important decisions in one person's life. But it doesn't mean that anecdotal evidence can be used at all. You shall use it, you shall add it to the conversation, especially including the fact that statistical evidence doesn't care or doesn't use, especially including the fact that statistical evidence is never 100%. There can be high probability of something, but it's, it is never 100%. So use it. Use it if you think that it works. Use it if you think that it is worth it to use it in this specific occasion. Don't forget about statistical evidence. I, pl I, I suggest you highly to not forget the statistical evidence. Way too many people do it and they first go, I think it is like that, or Peter said it is like that, so Peter is always right. Only because something is good for one person, doesn't matter whether it is you, it doesn't matter whether these are your friends, your close people, it doesn't matter. Only because something works for you, it doesn't mean that it, it works for everyone. That's basically why statistical evidence is better than anecdotal evidence. You can still use it for you, and maybe will make sense even more than you using statistical evidence information for you. But still you shall not push your own experience on other people or your own expectations or your own opinions and views and emotions. Be kind of thoughtful of both. I would suggest that. That's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If it is the case, please drop a like. You can also subscribe to the channel, except for that. 
I see you on Monday in one week. As I told you already, I will take a short break and have a great week without me. Bye.